Hello everyone and welcome back to space! Sorry if I killed your ears, headphone users, but I think it exemplifies what we're about to be doing. Which is going to- okay, I'm not gonna do it again. But, resume saved. Trayman just started- if you notice this guy, the Baconator that I've been playing, um, I have clocked about 20, 25 hours in this game since I finished that tutorial, it's just basically learning. And by learning, I mean launching missions to uh, Moon, Minmus, Eve, Duna, all over the place. But here, we're starting from ground zero again. We're gonna have to go inside the BAB and build something for our first orbital vessel. Called... The Kerfoot. I promised someone I'd name it that, so uh... Yeah. I, I want to do this, but I really don't want to kill a bunch of people. So I think we're just gonna go with uh... This guy. Who I use often. But to keep this guy up... We're gonna have to need... Or we're gonna have to have solar panels, but before that we need that same special keep ourselves stable. So if we have control and stability, the next thing we need is power for the stability. So that's going to be a RCS fuel tank. My computer's making weird noises. I think that's my computer. I hope it's not my computer, but I think it's my computer. Alright. And then this is going to be the final stage. This is going to be the descend stage. So, we need something to get it back down safely. I think it's in utility, I'll find this. Parachute. That'll get us back down to Earth. Back down to Earth. But, um, we need RCS thrusters so that we can uh, keep ourselves on the straight and narrow when we're in space. But, importantly, to power our, our unit here, we need, oh, that's wrong, hold shift, it'll be a little bit more precise. And now we have a control, we have power for the control, we have a way to get it back down, and we have uh, stability, power for the stability output for the stability, and we need a something to disconnect it from the next stage when the time comes. I don't get what the difference between these two are. I don't actually know whatever, I'll just use this one. Uh, I always use this one. I don't know what the difference is. But, um... Next we need the orbiter stage. So, we're probably gonna want that. No, not that. Need a more powerful one. This one's thrust vector, too. This one isn't, but it has a little bit more power. Either way, we're not gonna be using much of that up there. Next, let me lower it. Next, we need something to get it off the launch pad. I'm being rather simplistic here. I'm gonna grab some radial decouplers. I'm gonna go and get... Where are those... These guys. I want another set of those. I don't know how much it's gonna take to get us out of the off the ground, I mean. Out of the ground. Oh, it's stuck in the ground now. I know I need some more of these engines. Stability is very important at the beginning of the flight. And to keep everything from shaking to pieces, we need struts. 
One click. Two click. That's completely off. Let me just redo that. That's a little bit better. Still a little bit crooked, but I like it better. And they make it look nice, even though they don't actually do anything yet, because they haven't been programmed to do anything. And some nose cones. So now we have our launcher stage and our orbiter stage. We need something to hold the launcher while we take off. It's gonna be these. Okay, they don't fit, do they? Oh no, they do. There we go. You know, I, I don't trust them there. I'd put them here. There. These are gonna hold the rocket before it takes off. Oops. I just screwed that up. I just completely screwed that up. Oh, there we go. Um. And for control while we're in the atmosphere, we're gonna need some cannons. These are little wings. Will the winglets fit? I will see how that works later. This is the first design, it's probably gonna fail. So we have right now in the staging. So let me put these two together. There we go. As these four will disconnect, the four engines will ignite. We'll launch up into the air, into the sky. Once we get into space, we'll use this stage to make a stable orbit and then uh, use it to bring it back down with the extra fuel we have. Although it may get stuck in space, we don't know. I'm gonna save this and head out to the launch pad. All right, let's go. This is the Kerfoot, ready to launch. We have nothing in this solar system yet, it's just the simple, this Mun Minmus, uh, Eve, Moho, Duna, Drez, Jewel is somewhere. Jewel. And... Eel. What we have to do is we have to power up the engines, and... I'm gonna start a gravity turn immediately. The turn it says. Yeah, 
fuel left, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna wait until we hit the apoapsis. I'm gonna see how much of a burn we need to make a orbit. Just put down a uh, little node there. A burn of three minutes. Oh jeez. Now I'm just gonna burn off all the fuel in this direction. There we go. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna face towards our... Hold on, let me turn on RCS. So that we can get a little bit more turning out of this. I'm gonna face towards our prograde vector so that these guys fall off away from us. And I'm going to... Whoa, stop. Don't wanna burn off all my fuel. Um, let me turn off RCS so that I don't waste the RCS fuel, because I can do this manually with just the torque from the command module and the SAS module. There we go. You know, probably about 30 seconds before we hit that, I'm going to start my, my burn. Let me just warp time a little bit. And jump out into map mode. And launch a car and to expand. This will get rid of the... Get rid of this node. This thing is going to have a very eccentric orbit if it has a orbit. You know what, that's an actually not nearly as eccentric as I expected it to be. So that's our first rocket, guys. The Kerfoot is in orbit, and I'm gonna keep it here, because there's no reason to really get rid of it. That went a lot quicker than I expected, but we don't have any lights on this thing. We have lots of power stored up, but we don't have any lights. Also, every episode, you guys are going to vote on what we do next. So. We have eight pieces of debris. Four of them are sitting in orbit, and they're going to fall back to Earth. And four of them are sitting on the launch pad. So essentially, we have zero pieces of debris. We have zero persistent pieces of debris. There we go, guys. We made orbit. Excellent job. Everything went better than expected. Also, I've never used those fuel tanks before. And unless I have the option, like, right now I have the option where I have enough fuel that I could turn this thing towards our retrograde and, um, basically stop us and get us to come back down to Earth. That's why it's tacked a parachute on it, just in case I wanted to do that. But... I don't have to, and I probably won't, but I'm going to leave the the uh, second stage attached so that we can do that if we need to, if the, if the low Earth orbit is, low Kerbin orbit is getting too crowded as mine, I think, or Minmus. I love it. Alright, so, go to Space Center, not in the flight. Let's put a guy up there now. Move that. Solar panels. Get that away. Oops. Drop this somewhere, attach that to it. This guy we are gonna put up and then bring back down. The thing about this, I'm gonna put some lights on it because, you know, good idea. I really want to. Um, so let's put a battery pack on the battery back. And. 
grab some solar panels. Again, just the cheap, dirty ones. Actually, I want to just do two. There we go. And I want landing legs for when we come back down. Finally, I want the lights. Let's get some lights. Something I haven't done as of yet, and I want to do because I looked up some pictures of people's and they looked amazing, is make a rover. I have not made a rover yet. Okay, that doesn't work. You know, maybe I'm not gonna put lights on this. But I put solar panels on a battery on it for a reason. Hold on, let's just switch over to quad, whatever. Turn these guys 180. I'll just tack them on like that. That's good. We're all set. Now we're gonna go up and come back down. I pick things up and put them down. Alrighty. Wait for physics to engage. There we go. Jebediah Kerman, are you ready to leave Earth? Kerman, I mean. Sorry. Too bad you're going anyways. Okay, gravity turn and stop. Say it's engage. And then we sit here while this thing goes high into the sky. I sent a thing, not a thing, I sent a probe, a long-range orbiter probe, to Duna, but I screwed it up, because, oh, well, no, 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 I'm sorry, I didn't screw it up, but I was on Skype with people, that was my bad, I went the wrong way, uh, and I noticed as I was finishing my orbit around Duna, and I was just polishing it off, making sure I had a full orbit. I noticed that it gave me the option to, instead of orbiting Duna, I could get pulled into the gravity well of Ike. And so I was on Skype with my friend, and I go, hey, should I orbit Ike? And he goes, uh, I can't 
can't remember the exact interchange, but it was just sort of like, he goes, yeah, go ahead, and I'm like, I'm doing it. <laughs> and so, I did my little burn. I still have tons of fuel in that rocket. But, uh, I did my little burn. And, ended up on Ike. Oh, wrong button. You're gonna get really far away from Earth, man. I screwed up your orbit, my bad. Yeah, you look pretty excited. Let's just test our landing legs. Okay, we can't when we're time warp. How much do these lights use? A lot, apparently. So we come in very low over Kerbin. Very is under 100,000. What we're gonna do now, I'll slow it down. Because we have to bring him back sometime. Can't stay out there forever. All I really need to do is get him under six hundred or sixty thousand I mean and this burn is gonna be for one second anyways. Twenty four minutes we burn. Wrong button. <laughs> go this way. We're about to go into the dark, so turn on the lights. I'm scared of the dark. goes the light. Seven, six, five, four, three, two. Gonna be burning retrograde to slow down our orbit. So that's the first thing of the uh, Kerbal Space Program on, on this new world. We built a rocket, a simple rocket, And got a probe into space that's gonna stay there, and we got a person into space who's gonna come back down right now. And we'll see how this goes. Six, five, four, three, two, one. Burn for one second. Well, that's not good. Oh, well, it's 12,000. We'll definitely be able to catch that. So what we're going to do is we're going to speed up time again. Oh. Huh. Until we start hitting atmosphere. And I'm going to disable the lights. Because it's going to be a daytime landing. And we're not going to have them anyways. Because what I'm about to do is this.
Hold on, get rid of that. And as you're speeding along, right after we pass this threshold right here, I'm gonna drop us back down, and I'm gonna say goodbye to you. And then we're gonna spin the ship around. Whoa! That's without RCS on. I'll show this. Yeah. There we go. That is without RCS on. Alright, so... I just, just recently found out you can do that. And the RCS units have individual controls. Aside from that. But we're not going to be using much RCS fuel. Because SAS does a hell of a lot. And so we're going to start hitting atmosphere pretty soon. Hopefully we, we're not going to come in over land, are we? No, we're not. We're going to come down somewhere in this ocean. Well, that's a problem. I guess we didn't need these landing legs then. Jebediah, are you ready? Why are you tipping like that? You know, I think it should be an option to dump fuel. I don't know why I just, just thought of that, but I definitely think there should be an option to dump fuel from uh, tanks that are full. What are those? Are there pieces of us? One of them is the separator and the other one is the uh, actual fuel tank. We're hitting the atmosphere. Fortunately, I don't think anything can burn up. Or else I would have had many, many problems in previous attempts at coming in. You know, I'm kind of curious where these guys are going. Looks like they already hit the ground. Yeah, they probably just did. Oh, the parachute deployed by itself. I, I didn't hit that parachute for the record. At least I don't think I did. Whatever, parachute's deployed, we're slowing down. You know what, why not? Lower the landing struts. <laughs> no, don't, actually. They're just something else to break when we hit the water. Drop the landing struts, and now we're going to be coming down. We're at 10,000 feet above sea level, or 11,000. 11,000 feet! 10,000 feet in Three, two, one, ten thousand feet, nine thousand feet. All the feats. Okay, dog. Coming down rather quickly. He's still really happy about this. Oh, uh oh. What is right on top of this cockpit? Oh right, the opening is there. <laughs> Just gonna look around. It's a beautiful cockpit, by the way. I can't read any of the gauges because my things are on low. Um, take it, I hit V to get out. There we go. Where's my parachute? 
Okay, parachute is still there. Hasn't broken yet. Fifteen hundred feet or meters. Damn it. Don't don't break off parachute. I know you're supposed to come off when we hit five hundred feet. There we go. I mean meters. Excellent work, man. Well, Kerbal. Excellent work, Kerb. Are there female Kerbals? I mean, I haven't seen any. I mean, I'm not sure what one would look like. <laughs> I mean, well, I mean, you can guess, like, this guy with long hair or something. Maybe they're a different combo. Maybe they're pink. What if female Kerbals were pink? What if in order to start a moon colony, you had to take a man and a woman Kerbal to the moon and then they would produce offspring that could live on the moon or something? I don't know. Yeah, what if your Kerbals did die after a certain point in time and if you wanted to make a really big like generational ship, if we ever get other solar systems to go to, if you wanted to make a generational ship, you had to make men and women. Whoa. Well, this thing is buoyant. That's laggy as balls. I've never landed anything in the ocean. <laughs> well, we made it. Okay, so let's just, um, whoa, wrong one. Let's just motor to shore from here. Can we? Apparently not. Oh wait, that's yes. Engage. Let's just get over to shore. <laughs> Excellent job. Let's just turn you right side up. Uh, no, I can't do it. Oh well. Let's uh, raise the landing struts and end this flight. Let's see what the outcome of it was, supposedly. End flight. End flight. Outcome flight ended. Yeah, okay. Well, mission successful. Nothing broke. And um, let's go to the tracking station for the hell of it. We have one thing around Kerbin after this. It's been up there for two hours. Four pieces of debris are the pieces on the launch pad. No EVAs, no flags, no bases, no stations, no ships, no landers, no rovers, no probe. But, um, before we get this done with, because I've been recording for a little while. <laughs> That's cool. Except now there's sunshine going through the center of the planet. Carbon is translucent! What is that? Like, and gilly. Why are the- why can I see the moons? Okay, okay, whatever. Okay, I guess I can just see the moons now. Before we end this, we're going to- Oh, that works now. Leave the space center. I'm going to show you guys this excellent world that I've built. I'm just going to give you an update on what I've been doing. The Baconator. So yeah, Kerbin's a mess. Uh, we have Orbit 1, Saturn 1. We have two Saturn 1 probes. Uh, Landsat. Two Landsats. One I launched yesterday. Saturn 2 decaying orbit. He's brushing the atmosphere every time, so don't worry about him. He's going to die. There's the other Saturn 1. So my other Landsat, there's the other Landsat. And we have Kerbin Star Station, which is actually just one part. I haven't worked on it yet. There's lots of debris. I made a mess. I'm sorry. I'm waiting until something slams into something else. And then we go to Landers. Oh well. Probes. One Orbiter. 
and no, what was this? Lander. Landed perfectly on Mun. On the Mun. And let me show you the other one. If I go over to Minmus. There's Minmus Orbit, which is... It's, it's pretty far out there. And then we have Minmus Lander, which is the, was the same as the other one, but it's a little bit different now because it's a... Uh, well, we had some issues. I'll put it that way. That's the RCS fuel tank. That's one of its landing legs. I'm not sure where the other three went. Or where the other two. I think one of them is over here where I tried to... Ah, oh, there it is. <laughs> yeah. And... Let me go back to Space Center. I wish there was just a way to go back to uh, this, but when you're on this, you can't switch craft very easily. There's LRO around EVE, Long Range Orbiter around EVE. This thing is completely out of fuel, I believe, but the periapsis, the periapsis is at 50 million meters. And if we go to this one, we can see that I have an orbiter around Ike, which is orbiting Duna. But that's about the extent, oh yeah, you guys saw this. He is someone I screwed up with. He is the only astronaut that I keep out there, except for in the space station, because I can't do anything with him. Because he's stuck. Sorry, guy. But yeah, all my debris. There's a long-range orbiter debris orbiting with this guy, and the needle two debris. The needle two debris is part of that. But let me show you just one more thing before we leave. And, uh, oh, cancel, cancel, cancel. Back. And it is the... What I used to get them to that place. So, if I go through here, you'll see a lot of... This is the rebuild of Crab Ship 1, I'll just say. A dart, which is basically just a lawn dart. And then, I'll show you guys the long-range orbiter. ba bum ba bum ba bum Yeah, so we have these jumbo fuel tanks or whatever they are, and then more jumbo fuel tanks. These are mainsail engines, I don't remember what this one's called, Skipper, I think. There's some fins, there's some more fins, there's some more fins. So yeah, this outer stage is to get us just out of the atmosphere, this stage is to achieve orbit, and then I use this whole apparatus to get to and orbit around whatever planet I'm targeting. LRO-1 is still well within our performance boundaries, it's um... I'm gonna use this guy to get to pretty much all the planets in the solar system because it has more than enough fuel to do it. If I showed you, I know I ran out of fuel going to Eve, but that's because I screwed up. And uh, if I showed you how much fuel is left in my Duna orbiter, you'd probably be a little bit surprised. In fact, the Minmus orbiter had almost all of its fuel, but the Mun one had lost all of its fuel. But that's the end of our episode today. Remember to put right in the comments what you want to see me do next, whether it's a space station, a moon landing, or what have you. Uh, just try and be as specific as you can, or as vague as you can. I'll interpret it how I want to. Um, but remember, the more specific you are, the more likely you, likely you are to get exactly what you're asking for. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and uh, thank you all for watching.